Thank you, everyone, for joining. Oh, let me just, uh, my screen is now blocked. Uh, cool. Sorry, just a big uh, takeover. So, yeah, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us on a grim Friday afternoon. But we think this um, topic is going to be very interesting to talk about. So my name is Monica. I'm um, one of the anti-honour-based abuse facilitators here at Oxford Against Cutting. This is our first time, like not this particular session, but the series. Uh, this, the series is called TikTok. So this is Kids Tackling Online Crime. Um, and the series is aimed to empower young people to tackle online crime by increasing knowledge and confidence by speaking on or speaking of the issues or just being aware. Um, we really want young people to be at the forefront of the topic. Um, so obviously those that are joining will have questions toward the end. But if we can, if there are some young um, pioneers that want to lead the way, please just let them have the mic and then we'll obviously come back to you. Um, I'm Dot is moderating with me today, so I'm going to hand over to you, Dot. Brilliant. Thanks, Monica. So just a few bits of housekeeping before we get started. So we will record the first half of the discussion today between Monica and Shazad, and then we will uh, stop the recording. So if people would like to ask questions, um, they might feel more comfortable once the recording's off. Um, we hope to create a non-judgmental space during the discussion by respecting one another's opinions. There's no pressure to join in conversation if you prefer to just listen today. Um, and likewise, if you are contributing a lot to the discussion afterwards, then please also be mindful of allowing others time to speak too. Please anonymize any stories that you share. So if anyone does tell us anything that makes us concerned for a child or a vulnerable adult, um, then we would have to pass that information on. Um, but yeah, if you're sharing any sort of experiences or stories, then please anonymize those. Um, please be aware that if you choose to have your camera off today, we may ask you to turn it on briefly so we can see who you are. But I think we have already um, worked out who everyone is in the call today, so that's fine. Um, so we will share some support services in the chat box during chat box during the session. So if you have any worries, um, then you can contact those support services. You can also contact us privately if you'd like to talk about a concern. But just to let you know, we're not a frontline service. Um, we are going to be taking some notes today, but only if key th themes raised during the session, just to help feed into future work. Um, but nobody will be named or identified in the notes. And as always, you can make comments in the chat box, either to everybody or just to individuals. Cool, thanks, Monica. Thank you, Dar. So for today's session, we'll be talking about matchmaking platforms and if they enable forced marriage or exploitation. And I'm delighted to introduce, introduce our guest speaker, Shazad Yunus, the founder and CEO of Muz. So Shazad, over to you. If you could just tell us a bit about your platform, just a bit about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, thank you. Thanks, uh, guys, for having me. Um, so, yeah, so I guess background of me, uh, Northerner, um, actually a computer scientist by degree, um, ended up in a banking job for about nine years, fell out of love with all of that, had the idea for this, which is basically a Muslim matrimonial platform, help Muslims find a life partner. So we're definitely centered around finding someone serious, not really the whole casual dating market. That's not really our thing. Um, uh, I set it up about nine years ago. I actually quit my job learned how to build apps and then built it. Um, now, thankfully, we're the biggest in the world. We're about to hit 10 million members any day now. Uh, global, our, our customers are global. Our revenue is global. Um, we've got a big team in London. Um, where else? I think right now we've we've helped over now half a million people around the world find, that, find their partner, which is crazy. So people are sending in stories, photos, uh, if you're having kids, the whole thing. Like It's amazing like the, the, the real world impact of what we do. And it's not just in the UK. It's truly global, which is amazing so yeah it's a bit, a bit about us perfect thank you and times have changed like me growing up as a young muslim woman like i think the way we used to contact people was from um was it bbm and msn oh. that's those sort of ways so yeah congratulations on your success and uh, paving the way for young muslim people uh so i've got a couple of questions for you so first it is who's using your platform uh, so uh, I guess twofold. So we're roughly two thirds male, one third female. Um, uh, it slightly varies across different markets, but yeah, for the most part, that's kind of the overall ratio. Uh, you know, big big use bases in the UK, uh, US, Canada, Europe, and then rest of the world. Um, 
in terms of the uh, from last check you know for example in the uk i think over 70 percent of people on the platform are at least university educated uh so a decent kind of professional crowd if you will on the platform but equally you have a non-professional crowd as well so people who haven't been to university etc and the goal for us is trying to match people the right way amazing so in terms of like groups like i know you've mentioned university but do you ever have like parents grandparents try to create an account for on behalf of their their relative like what to- type of audience groups and age groups are we talking about yeah gem- so generally speaking for us I mean we're trying to look at the future which is basically where you as an individual we empower you to find a partner on your own terms um and then the goal and um, kind of even the advice that we give people is all right once you found someone involve your family um on both sides right and get things moving so generally speaking people who do all that they actually you know it takes them on average about six months from joining the platform to actually leaving and getting married which is pretty crazy um uh, but yeah, it mostly it is the individual themselves. We definitely have had sometimes parents signing up on behalf of their kids uh, or relatives signing up on behalf of like, yeah, uh, family members, et cetera. But there's still a bunch of security measures, you know, phone number, selfie, et cetera, uh, that we have behind the scenes to make sure are you the person who's actually using this account? Amazing. So I was just going to, um, which leads me on to my question nicely. Like, how do you check the age? Is that through, like, do you get so, some id or uh, yeah so well for, for the most part you declare yourself so you set your own date of birth etc cetera, etc cetera. we do have a feature called id verification where uh optionally you can submit your driving license passport etc and you get a blue tick on your name and you know by that we've checked your id we've checked your age and made sure it all matches up so we do have both um like for us we fully appreciate like the nature of our product a lot of people aren't necessarily comfortable signing up to an app and immediately giving you know, a copy of their passport, etc. Just whether we like it or not, people aren't comfortable with that. Amazing. Um, so have you ever been aware of a forced marriage taking place through the app or any stories, even uh, in the industry that you're in? Uh, it, I have to admit, not, not massively, not in the UK, to be honest. So on the app, like I said, we're empowered more around um, helping you as an individual find someone. So... For the most part, especially because of the, the, the safety measures we've got, uh, for the most part, it's almost the opposite. There's probably more instances of people who use our platform and but don't necessarily want their family to know. You know, they, they want to find someone. It's the opposite. And then they're trying to navigate. All right. You know, the, the kind of running joke is, you know, we'll lie about where we met. You know, people some people don't want to admit that they met on an app. So that's probably the more common behavior. I definitely in nine years, thankfully, haven't seen anything around forced marriages definitely come across instances of bad marriages where people have got married to someone either rushed into it or as ever you know they meet someone and the guy turns out to be a low life effectively um so you do get things like that um uh which i would say you know in the negative instances is definitely way more common do you have any policies in place to prevent um something as like exploitation um forced marriages like is there and how do you how do you actually measure that? Because that's really hard to. It it is really hard. Like remember, we're we're a platform that's global, you know, and you're you're an app where you've got literally millions of messages being sent every day, millions of swipes being done every day of people, you know, checking each other's profile, liking each other, matching, etc. It's like it's on that scale. So a to even do something on such a manual level, it's it, it's literally impossible. Uh, a couple of things that we do do though, in the in the app, it's super we made it so easy to get in touch with others, us as a team and to report anything that's not quite right. So if you see a profile or an instance or a behavior, et cetera, um, it's super easy for people to report. And we have access to all the chats so we can see what was said, what was sent, what's going on here. Also, if, if a bunch of people are reporting someone, we've got kind of a full uh, history, if you will, of, okay, there might be something going on here, but actually there have been four other reports by four other people around something similar. So usually if we don't have evidence, but you've got a lot of that kind of behavior, that's enough to take action. And so for us, we we quite have we have quite a robust kind of blocking procedure to get rid of people, bad actors, et cetera. The other thing I was going to say is we've got a team of 28 uh, fully female customer support team. So just women, mostly here in the UK, who are dealing with all the reports, all the complaints, all the issues, any, any assistance that people need. Because for the most part, we know it's women who, on dating gaps, but just in general, who have a harder time it's it's men who are you know simplify it men are usually the abuser who are taking advantage of women that's by far the most common scenario amazing thank you so um 
I know you said you've like global bases and like obviously expectation, cultural demands vary across the world. So how do you then where somewhere like maybe Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, might it might be more the norm to be exposed to a forced marriage. How do you then operate in those areas? Yeah, yeah. I mean, remember, look, the here's where things break a little bit. A forced marriage generally is, you know, you've got both sides who within reason know the deal. They know that there's a forced marriage that they're trying to trying to happen here. The difference on an app is you're connecting with strangers you know and it's a bit more voluntary in terms of people you're meeting so you know it, it's very hard you, just on a probability basis it's very hard to try and make that mechanism work online because online is all about you the person searching yourself talking to people etc you know we for us we're trying to provide a safe space for the guy and the girl to get talking you know and that's what we're trying to do and you know in a forced marriage that basically doesn't happen there's not much of a conversation before um and there's a lot of duress on both sides so I actually think that mechanically it's slightly different, um, for sure. Now, probably what is more common, or I would say if you're going to walk through a scenario, definitely, let's say in Pakistan, but I actually think it could be any country, not just Pakistan. You definitely could have a situation where guy and girl meet on the app and then quite quickly pressure is applied from either family to get things going, right, whether they're happy or not. Now, that's probably more common. Um, I mean, but I would say if I had to, you know, when there are negative issues and people get in touch with us, you know, generally speaking, I would almost say, yeah, it was people saying, oh, their in-laws were really difficult, we're pressuring them into X, Y, Z, et cetera. That kind of stuff's more common, but that's almost an after the fact, which, like I said, could happen with, with any marriage, in all honesty. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, so in what ways, like, um, I know you don't refer to yourself as a dating app, it's a matchmaking app, but apps like yourselves or even dating apps that, you know, you, you know, as a Muslim, you might come across... Um, yeah. How can the apps educate users about the signs of like forced marriage or you you might be willing, so I might be willing to find someone, but actually at home I might be risked, at risk of honor-based abuse mm. and I'm hearing all this and, you know, as you might know, there's lots of emotional guilt, lots of like, well, you've been on this platform, you shouldn't really be on that platform, it's not the way for it to be. So how can platforms like yourself, like, promote awareness and prevent stuff like this happening or just making us I think you said it at the beginning like feeling empowered that is mm. my decision marriage is like in Islam it doesn't say to force marriage is frowned upon yeah so yeah. how do we how do we then um promote yeah, yeah, that yeah. well we do we do quite a lot already so like for example we like we have a very active blog YouTube all our socials and we like we have the ability to share messages directly with our customers and we do almost every week we'll be sharing a video or blog article advice etc so we've done like sessions with mental health experts sexual health experts relationship experts um um uh, all manner of like we actually have real success couples who got married giving advice to people of their journey the lessons that they learned red flags all that kind of stuff so we've actually done a ton of that and part of it is the education you know you've got a lot of young people who you know are pressured by their family to get married right that's probably the bigger pressure but they're not really given any support assistance education in that whole part of the journey right so whether we like it or not, we're kind of lumped with that responsibility of, all right, how do we help and educate people? So on that front, we do a lot. We make it very available. And you can see by the comments, the traffic that we get that, yeah, people are interested in that. They're asking for it, which is why we create it. So like I said, we've partnered with experts, you know, from the UK, from the US and abroad um, to talk around some of these matters. Equally, what we try and educate people to do, like I said, is uh, talk to them about red flags, about expectations of what to ask, what are the difficult questions to ask, um, how to figure out if, if someone is serious, is not serious, or has different intentions. Because ultimately, and this is one thing I realized when I started this business, you know, I was very naive to, I guess, what goes on in the world on that front. And, you know, uh, probably the the thing that, that opened my eyes was, you know, the moment you put, you know, two people together, a thousand different things can happen, you know, and, and people and relationships are messy, you know. So that for me is it was kind of the big eye opening thing. Amazing. Thank you. How do you address the issue of like fake profiles and catfishing, which I feel like anyone can be exposed to even on like social media platforms? Um, and also you've touched on it as well. Like you might be talking to someone for a couple of months and then you you meet them guy or girl and actually they have like this whole different facade to them. They might be really um, obsessive. So how do you, well, let's talk about uh, catfishing and fake profiles first. Can you give me one quick second? Because the post mine just came. <laughs> I'll be super yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Wait for a I'm going to actually turn the light back on as well, guys. Give me one second. It's a motion detected room. Okay. 
do want to add as well, if anyone has any questions, um, just feel free to submit them into the chat box and I will pick them up shortly. Well, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so on your question, um, uh, a whole bunch of things, actually. We probably spent so much time on this. I th I say the first thing is it's an endless game of cat and mouse. Um, scammers, catfishes, fake people, like their tactics, they just... I mean, remember, you have professional scam organisations. It sounds crazy, but you literally have companies abroad where they're just loaded with people who professionally are trying to scam people, right? It's a business, right? Um, people don't realize it's a business, it's a big business. For us, what do we do? We've done so many things across the years. Like I said, we spend a ton of time uh, making sure that when we block people, they can't come back. Um, now, the problem is, for us, we're constrained by what Apple and Google let us do on your device. So basically, we've kind of uh, you know, we've pushed it right to the wire in terms of what we're allowed to do and what we're physically able to do. But scammers know how to get around some of that stuff. So so there's that. Second bit is, you know, we confirm you by email, by phone number, by selfie. Um, and a selfie, we also do a facial kind of fingerprint check. The selfie you gave us, does it match with the photos? Like, are you the same person in the photos as well? And um, we also do some checks around the selfie to say, is the selfie real? Do I think it's a face or do, is somebody trying to put a photo of a face or a mask on, et cetera? So we do all of that. Again, all this just makes it difficult. But if you're a professional, you've got all the equipment, uh, you'd be amazed at what people can do. We're always surprised when we see some crazy new thing that they've that they've done after we've kind of implemented something. So it's it's all you can do is make it difficult. It's never impossible. One of the things we have in our app is free video and voice calling um, on, on the platform. We were like one of the first to have it. Um, we actually built it during COVID. Now, uh, that's for me is one of the best ways to make sure is someone real, what their intentions are. Like I always say when people are talking to someone, I'm like, get on a video call ASAP, right? Either meet in person, which is the best way, but get on a video call because then you realize, all right, who am I speaking to and what am I dealing with? Um, like nine times out of ten, I'm amazed at people who have been scammed, etc. They never met or, yeah, they never even had a video call. And it baffles me. Like I'm, my brain literally can't comprehend, but I guess it's an emotional decision, but I can't comprehend giving someone, you know, five thousand pounds to someone I've never even seen face to face or even on a on a video call. Um, but people do. And you, I'll always be amazed by what unfortunately people fall for. Uh, it's brutal. Even on that. So one of the other things that we do is on the prevention side. So we have a whole bunch of automated checks if people say certain words where we think they might be a scammer. We also have a thing where in the chat, if you send a phone number or if you try and if someone sent you a phone number and you're trying to obviously call that. So they're taking you outside of the chat. Because remember, all of our chats are recorded by us. So what a lot of scammers want to do is take it immediately off um, our app, right? So if we're able to detect that that's happening uh, in the app, we actually give you a really, really big warning. Um, you know, never meet up without somebody else there. Never give them money, no matter what, et cetera, et cetera. So you couldn't be clearer. One thing I've learned, and it sounds really bad, we could do all of this. Some people will just always, I don't know, they'll, they'll just ignore all of the education and fall for it. And that's the hard bit. So for us, uh, you know, the key for us, like I said, is just making sure that we make it as difficult as possible for scammers to use the platform. And I think we do a fairly good job, like relative to other platforms. But like I said, when you get big, you become a target for these organizations. Yeah, definitely. So um, thank you for that. So when it comes to like let's say I want to go into the app like I think for for my parents it'd be like oh my god what you what are you doing like what privacy measures are in place for someone that wants to be on it I feel like I've got choice I've got consent I'm looking for the right partner but obviously growing up in um most traditional Muslim families like dating mm -hmm. or the idea of it is is slightly frowned upon on so what what measures do you have for those type of people yeah yeah probably one of the first ones especially for women is like complete photo privacy so you you can be private on the app we're not like other apps where everyone can see everyone's photos you can control all right who can see my photos when they can see them etc number one number two super easy to block anyone um so you can stop them uh, uh viewing your entire profile account etc um also and we're just about to release this now where you can block um so we can make sure that everyone in your phone book on your phone um, can't see your account. So at least then you have an extra level of privacy there. Um, oh, there was one more thing I was about to say to you. Um, I'd say that the, the, the big things, I'll actually say, sorry, on the flip side of that, we were the, the first app ever to have uh, like a chaperone feature. So where you can actually add a family member into your app and that's clear. So whoever you're talking to is clear on both sides that there's a, a third party present here. 
um, and they get you know access to all your conversations. Basically, they're there to just make sure that nothing untoward is going on, um, and it's an extra level of protection for you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, any tips that you'd give for users? Uh, tips, I would say, I always say like, um, first figure out yourself. A lot of people just like, they, they don't know, they don't really know what they're looking for. And that's the bit that they need to try and figure out. All right, well, what, you know, it sounds bad. What are my own pros and cons and what am I looking for in someone else? And is that realistic? Because obviously everyone always starts with a super long tick list and then they realize it's actually difficult. So I always say get to the heart of what are the truly important things that are straight deal breakers for you. I always say give people a chance. Um, Plenty of marriages we've had on the platform um, have happened between people where they just gave each other a chance, even though they weren't necessarily in their filters, preferences, etc. cetera. Um, we've actually got a section in the app that is dedicated to that, where you're not tied down just to your filters. Um, probably third thing I would always say, just generally, is just be nice. Um, like be courteous, courteous to people. Don't ghost them. Um, just be polite. You know, just make it easy. There's a lot of people who are in this boat of, you know, trying to find a partner, et cetera. And it's not easy at all. Of course it's not. Um, I would say if just everyone just helps each other out, it just makes it a little bit better for everyone. Perfect. So um, I really like the feature of the chaperone. I feel like in Islam, that's quite fundamental as well. Mm. But how do you, is there like a criteria or, or privacy measures in place to ensure that it's not like my older brother just being pushy and just wanting, like trying to initiate this? So it might be, yes, I've had free choice. But now, actually, there's a lot of control coming in. Like, why are you talking to someone that doesn't read Namaz or whatever it is, these different mm. benchmarks? So how do you control the chaperone in that case? Uh, this is hard. I mean, remember, the chaperone here, they, I mean, within reason, they they don't have control of your account as such. So um, all they are is more of a third party in the conversations. So and in the conversation, they, they witness it, but they can't interact in that conversation, if that makes sense. So right. the point is, like I said, it's an extra pair of eyes and nothing more. So we don't give too much control over to a chaperone. Um, you as a person still have control over your account. Cool. And can they be removed from a conversation, like a one-to-one -one chat, or can they be added like... Uh, yeah, you can, you can add them, remove them, whatever you want. You're in control. Okay. Now, when it comes to online and obviously face-to-face, -face, so I know you do like some networking style events... I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's the correct term, but almost where you're having like, you know, both both genders coming along over and I don't know, doing some fun activity. How do you stop it there? Like, how do you stop someone being potentially exploited there or, you know, abused verbally, whatever it is? So how yeah, do you? Yeah. yeah, no. So for us, well, let's say our, our singles events, et cetera, we have like um, we always have quite a big team presence from our side at the events um, to help everyone out. So we're, we're, you know, our, what's our goal? Creating a safe space for people at the event. Make sure they, they can talk, they can they can mingle, et cetera. Um, uh, so for us, we do allow chaperones to to attend an event, but we keep them a little bit separate from the event itself. Um, and then, you know, just to give you as a person freedom to go meet people, talk to people, et cetera. Um, but then, like I said, at our event, we make ourselves super available. Even myself, I've, I've been at so many of our events, right? Um, helping people out, even trying to match meet people, et cetera. People come up to me with feedback, you know, thankfully, we've had very few instances of bad behavior at our events. But when we have had it, we boot people out. You know, we we try and be as tough as possible on this stuff. And oh, I had a question in terms of platforms. I appreciate you might not want to say other names, but are there are you aware of other dating apps or matchmaking apps that don't have these measures in place or that you you've looked at and just thought? why are they doing this like why are they not protecting the user you don't I have mean, to mention it so i appreciate yeah no no yeah. i mean look uh, a a it's, i always say it's resources and priority they're the two things you know it's kind of like there's so many apps that have really poor accessibility features you know and for real, like for, for a lot of apps they because you have very few people who need accessibility a lot of apps will be like oh why am i bothering with this like it's so low down in my list and you know, even for us, we were like we had we have some uh, users. I'm just using that as an example, by the way. But we have some users who have accessibility needs, and for us, we're like, you know, almost felt bad that they don't get the attention that they need in terms of app changes, making the app friendlier for uh, harder uh, people who are harder vision or or etc. So for us, we've actually prioritized a lot of that work and um, to make sure that at least on a base level, we do a fairly good job. There's always loads more to do, no question. But for me, it's kind of like that. You have to. 
as a founder, as a, as a company, you have to say, no, this is important enough. Um, uh, I need to prioritize it. And for us, but it definitely, especially as we've grown, you know, there's kind of no excuses. You've got to take this stuff seriously. Um, but like I said, it's it's endless. We've been doing work on all this. In, it's never finished. Like it's all nine years. We've been adding more to what we do, how we do it, et cetera. So yeah, it's never over. What so um I think that comes into this question quite nicely. So what is in the pipeline for for Mills and what would you like to see out of the app? Um uh sorry, do you mean this in terms of new features or in what in what way? Yeah, sorry? yeah. Yeah, new features, like where do you see matchmaking going? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. so actually, so we've only tried a, a few things, actually. So we were trying to call it a virtual speed dating feature that we built out, where rather than swiping and all that stuff, which a lot of people get frustrated by, we just try and match you there and then for a phone call uh, with someone, and then you could decide, do I want to carry on talking to this person or not? So that's like one of the things. We've done a load behind the scenes of better, uh, better matching, better communication between people. One of the big things that we're working on now is, all right, Outside of purely f- uh, marriage, how do we help people connect with their community, connect with their faith, friends, interest groups, etc.? So that's a big, a big project that we're working on now, which is a really, really tough project. Amazing. But yeah, the goal is just bringing people. Our, our tagline is um, where Muslims meet, and ultimately our mission is transforming how Muslims meet and marry. So I think the next part for us is helping Muslims meet. You know, whether it's for marriage or not. Great. Um, sounds very exciting. So um, you might not have the answer to this, and it, this question might be a little bit unfair. But in terms of, um, I haven't used your app, so I'm just going to base this on an assumption that I know. So you've mentioned that it's liking or or swiping. How do you then deal with the the issue of like um, potential ox- uh, exploitation? Because as a young girl, I'm just referring like maybe I'm imagining myself as a young girl. I'm not getting the likes that I want or what I think I'd get. And then I've got someone that may be a fair few years older than me, but is giving me the attention. And for me, not being exposed to relationships, I'm like, okay, there's not, you know, I don't see the issue of grooming and it might not be the issue, but there might be a bit of an underlie there. Mm-hmm. How do you then deal with that for someone that might have like body image issues, but then they've got their attention and they feel validated, which they're obviously allowed yeah. to do so. How do you then deal with that? I mean, this is the hard part. I mean, um, and it's really difficult for us as a business to, especially when things are taken off the app, that becomes, you know, that was the heart, the heart of our business is connecting two people together and then they kind of go from there. And that, that's always the hard part. All right, stuff that happens outside of the app, what what visibility do we get on it and what can we do about it? Some of the things that we do do and we're always open to, we, we do get people will send us um, screenshots from WhatsApp, uh, emails, evidence, photos, etc. You know, unfortunately, there have been people who, uh, you know, met on the app, either got married or whatever, and there was some form of abuse that happened. And either they've uh, got the police involved and we've helped the police, or they've sent us evidence of of abuse, right? And so for us, when we see stuff like that, we take the hardest line we can. You know, we're blocking people, we're encouraging people to go to the police, etc. Um, it is uh, genuinely, it's really difficult. You know, we're like I said, truly global um as a platform and it becomes really difficult to get in the nitty-gritty of he said she said or people's those kind of situations if you will and um i really like your point about like you know after the like the post you know they may mm. have got married but they're still willing to support so let's just say i've got an account i've now found someone i've deactivated it is there a separate avenue for me to just contact and be like actually you know this guy is now accusing me of this he's used oh, yeah, my yeah, post yeah. And that's that's and that's whenever that that's common in terms of people getting in touch afterwards. And it's very easy for us to find your account, find the conversation, find the other person, uh, dig in and take action. So it, that's very straightforward. It's something we've we've actually done a lot whenever it's happened. Like we'll ask for all that evidence, we get it, and we we take action. We block them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Make sure they and can't come back. You, sorry, how long do you keep those details for? Uh, for a, up, uh, yeah, about three years according to our privacy policy, and it's intentionally for that reason because. Bad actors want to delete their account so that there's no trace. And so for that reason, the greater good for us is we'll keep the data longer so that if there is an incident, you know, maybe something happens a year down the line, the police get in touch saying, can we have data? Great. We've got something to to help people. Um, On the app, and it might be something that you think about in the future, but do you have any like little sub- subsections that do go into detail about forced marriage? So I might be dealing with the pressure at home, but I want someone of my own choice. So like Carmen Ivana, one of the biggest yeah. in the UK, obviously. Do you have information like that? Is that something that you have in the plan or? 
Uh, yeah, so we have so we have a safety and behavior section on our on our app and on our website, um, which we've actually already been adding to. And the whole aspect of our enforced marriages, worlds of families, etc., is another bit that we're adding in. Um, we have this plan that we're you know we're trying to bring to life now, which is where we have both religious, relationship, uh, social experts talking about different aspects of the whole journey of marriage, if you will, as a Muslim. And one of the parts is around forced marriages, etc. Amazing. That's the um, end of my question. So I think we're going to stop recording because we'll hand over to the audience. But thank you so much for your time. And it sounds like the the app is getting bigger and better and there's lots of consideration to to your users. So thank you very much. No, thank you. It's a, I always say it's a complicated space. <laughs> it is indeed. Dating and being in relationships is as well. So yeah. Dot, do you mind um, just stop, 